Hi, everyone. My name is Gregory. I'm part of the crypto team, and I'm currently helping out uh, financial integration with uh, the development of CKEF. So what is CKEF? Uh, it's a native token to DIC, which is meant to be a twin to ETH, uh, the to native token of Ethereum. So it's similar in spirit to uh, CKBTC with Bitcoin. So meaning uh, ignoring transaction fees, uh, with one ETH, you can buy one CK ETH, and with one CK ETH, you can get back one ETH. So why do we want to do that? Uh, Manu already explained it uh, in previous uh, Global r and uh, but basically this allows for cheap and fast CK ETH transfer within the IC. Uh, in contrast, on Ethereum, uh, transfer are usually quite slow. So like block finality is around 12 minutes and also a bit expensive. They cost usually at least always a few dollars. It's also a first step towards uh, more general token on the IC. So towards uh, ERC20 tokens. And more generally, we want to attract uh, some of the Ethereum community uh, to the IC, be it in terms of developer or liquidity. So how do we do this? Uh, we do this in two steps. The first step that we're going to show now is a proof of concept using a testnet of Ethereum called Sepolia. So that's CK Sepolia if, And we're going to show like the two main flows, which are deposit and withdrawals. And the second step uh, is to bring this proof of concept uh, to be production ready and uh, to use also Ethereum mainnet. So we have a forum post where we detail uh, the architecture. Uh, please uh, read it and we would enjoy very much your feedback. We, in the next few days, we also post the URL to the Minter so that everyone can play with it, uh, try to break it, hack it, whatever. Uh, we would welcome uh, pretty much any feedback. So let's jump ahead and uh, let's start with doing a deposit uh, to get some CK ETH. So how, the, is, how is this going to work? So on the left, we have the IC, uh, in particular subnet of the IC, where we're gonna focus on two canisters, uh, the ledger on the left and the CK if meter on the right. So basically the ledger does the bookkeeping and the minter is gonna instruct the ledger when to mint or to burn uh, CK if. And on the right, we have uh, Ethereum P2P network. So, if you recall from previous Global R&D, we already mentioned that we're going to do the deposit via helper smart contract, which is already deployed on Ethereum. And basically, that's going to be uh, our first interaction from a user perspective. So the user is going to call that smart contract to start the deposit. So because it takes some time to, uh, to go through a deposit, I'm going to jump ahead and uh, do this right now. So now uh, I'm on the Minter dashboard. I hope uh, this is big enough. Uh, so this should look familiar for anyone who has seen already the CKBTC dashboard. Uh, basically, we have some general information up there. And then below, like any uh, state changing event is represented. So for example, we have uh, already processed uh, deposit, so called mintement. And below, we already have processed uh, transactions or so withdrawals. So Hopperhead, we can see, for example, that okay, we are using this uh, Sepolia testnet. And one link that we have is uh, to this helper uh, smart contract that I opened here. And now I'm going to call that smart contract. I can use virus tool for this, but using Etherscan directly here is uh, convenient. And I'm going to call, in particular, a deposit method. So I'm going to connect my MetaMask, and we can see that uh, I already have some funds, so around 1.4 uh, Cipolia if, and I'm gonna make a transfer around of 0 0.05 if, and now I need to specify to which IC principle this deposit should go to. So for the purpose of the demonstration, I prepared like a little uh, demo principle. So we can see that this principle start with HK Roy something, and the last comment it basically asks the ledger if this principle already has some funds. And you can see that this is the case. So this is like my plan B in case the deposit doesn't work. Uh, but we're also going to see that if it does work, then this balance should increase. So I'm going to copy uh, that principle. And basically, now I need to specify it here. But uh, this requires some uh, specific encoding. So for to help with this, 
we have a little conversion tool here uh, right in the dashboard. And basically what this does is just to pad uh, this uh, principle with a few zeros and uh, does hex encoding on top of it. So now uh, my MetaMask is asking for confirmation. Let's go ahead with this. And let's check that the transaction is being processed. So on Ethereum, like a block is, is a mine around uh, every, every 12 seconds. So usually it may take some time to appear in a block. Okay, sometimes it takes a bit longer. Okay, we, meanwhile, we're gonna go ahead uh, with the explanation uh, while waiting for it to be mine. So at some point it's gonna be mine and uh, let's see what happened uh, in the background. So basically the smart contract here is gonna do two things. Uh, one is gonna emit an event. So an event is like an Ethereum concept, which will allow us to search, uh, to efficiently search on transaction that happened on that smart contract. And this event specifies two things, like the amount of the deposit. So here 0.05 ETH and uh, the principle that I input. And then uh, this uh, smart contract is gonna transfer the funds to some other address. And this address is basically derived from the minter's threshold ECDSA public key. That means that only the minter can via threshold ECDSA uh, sign transaction originated from that address. So basically what we achieve now is to transfer funds to some address, which is controlled by the minter, but the minter still doesn't know anything about uh, our deposit. So for that, we're gonna need some uh, third parties uh, in the form of JSON RPC providers. So think Infura and so on. They provide uh, an Ethereum JSON RPC API that we're gonna use. And one of the methods uh, that we're gonna use is this if get logs. So basically uh, we're gonna scrap the logs within a given block range to a specific address. So the address of the smart contract and for a specific uh, topic, uh, that's this event that we want to look at. And this is gonna give us uh, the event that occurred. And now uh, one thing to realize is that based on this information, we're gonna mint some CK if, and one strong invariant that we want to hold is that one CK if is always backed by one if. So to avoid any single point of failure, actually what we're gonna do is to query multiple such uh, JSON RPC provider two or three, and uh, they're gonna give us uh, different, uh, so various responses, and we're only gonna proceed if uh, those responses are equal. So if they are the same, uh, then we're gonna, uh, then the minter is gonna instruct the ledger to mint that amount of CK if 0.05 uh, to that principle. So now let's see if my transaction went through. Yes, so now it has been mined. There already is some block confirmation. So I can check if it appeared on the dashboard. Yes, so now I see that the transaction was picked up uh, by the minter. So in Ethereum, uh, there are like 18 decimals. Uh, the base unit is the way. So one if is a 10 to the 18 way. So that's why 0 0.05 if appears with so many zeros. And we can see that Here's my uh, IC principle that I gave, this HK Roy something. So here you may notice that this appeared quite fast. And the reason is here I cheated a bit. The minter is instructed to look at the latest block instead of finalized block. So in the MVP, this will look at finalized block, meaning uh, a deposit will take a bit longer uh, because finality on Ethereum takes a bit longer. And so I can also check that on the now on the ledger that my balance in, indeed increased. So we can see that before I had the, this 319 something, now I have like 369 something. So I indeed have more uh, CK if to play with. So now that we did the deposit, uh, let's do a withdrawal. And so here basically uh, from the user perspective, the user needs to do two things. So. On the one hand, uh, the user is gonna instruct the ledger to approve the minter to spend uh, some amount. And then uh, it's gonna instruct the minter 
to uh, do a withdrawal to a specific Ethereum address. So here I put back my MetaMask address. And then the minter is going to instruct the ledger to burn that amount. And then we're going to queue that withdrawal request. And so basically at the end of the interaction from a user perspective, and now on a timer, we're going to process each request separately. So we're going to take one request, estimate the transaction fee, and issue a request where the cost is at uh, the recipient. So the recipient is going to receive uh, a bit less. He's going to receive the withdrawal amount minus the fee. Then we're going to sign it via threshold ECDSA. Uh, we're going to send it over the network, and we're going to wait uh, for it to be mined in a block. And if at any stage uh, we fail for whatever reason, we're going to retry with the same transaction. So let's see it in action. So now I'm going to prove here uh, via DFX uh, the the minter. Uh, I'm going to prove the ledger. Sorry for the minter. So here. This principle is the canister ID of the minter. And I'm going to prove it for 0 0.05 uh, CK if. And now I'm going to do a withdrawal. So this is my MetaMask address here. And here on the left is again the 0 0.05 CK if. Uh, and I'm getting some uh, block index here. So basically, uh, with this, I can query the status of my withdrawal. So I can see, okay, the transaction is created. I can also see it on the dashboard. So if I scroll down, yes, yeah, so I can see that uh, this transaction with this index is created. I can see that the value is a bit less than uh, what I specified. So it's a bit less than this is 0 0.05 CK if, and that's because of the transaction fees. And at some point, if everything goes well, uh, this transaction should be uh, mine. So this has already happened, so I can jump can look at it on uh, if the scan. And so for example, here it really looks like uh, this transaction was issued from this minter address directly to my, Metasc uh, to my MetaMask address. And maybe my MetaMask already knows about this. Uh, okay, the receive is not yet shown. Sometimes it, it takes a bit of time. So we can continue a bit the explanation. So basically, all uh, at the end, it looks like uh, I have uh, a transaction sent from the Minter's address directly to my MetaMask address. And this is really thanks to a key a feature of the IC, which is uh, threshold ECDSA. So this allows the replicated Minter to uh, sign a share. And once there are enough signed share, then uh, we can combine them in a perfectly normally looking uh, threshold uh, ECDSA signature. Uh, maybe let me jump back to see if the deposit arrived on my MetaMask. Still not. Okay, bad luck. Uh, but uh, at some point, it's going to arrive. So to conclude, uh, now we, we, we did a proof of concept, and we would like to transit to an MVP. So obviously, uh, the code is not yet production ready. But in terms of feature, uh, we are not so uh, far away. Uh, the main thing that's missing is a retry strategy for sending transactions. And the reason is that in Ethereum, transactions are uh, sequentially ordered. So they're ordered by the so-called nonce, which is like an integer. So if you have transaction one, transaction two, and then transaction four and five, uh, so transaction one and two may be mine, but four and five are still going to be accepted by the network, but they're not going to be mine because uh, they are waiting for transaction number three. So that means if at any point uh, the minter issue a transaction, which is stuck, uh, because maybe it was mine in the block which was reoed or it was not picked up by any miner, then all future transactions are blocked. Uh, so we're going to need a smart strategy to handle this, uh, but uh, we already have some ideas there. So that's not going to be, we don't expect it to be a, a huge problem. And uh, with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, again, draw your attention to the forum post. Uh, please uh, feel free to give any feedback. And with this, uh, back to you, John.